Well, hidden variables, again, I always say, Bell, Bell said nicely, he said the term hidden variables, he called it a piece of historical silliness. <laughs> um, and he's absolutely right, um, because the word hidden, because they're not hidden. I mean, in the theories that employ them, they're not at all hidden. They, they're the opposite of hidden. They're what's manifest, and it's the quantum state that's represented by the wave function. That's hidden. That's hard to see. Um, where this comes in is exactly where I mentioned before. I th it, on any reasonable theory, the quantum wave function has to represent something physically real. Let's just call that object the quantum state. That's my terminology. Just to separate the mathematical representation from the object represented, right? The representation is the wave function. It's a function. Functions are mathematical things. It's a complex function. I can talk about the math of it. It represents this thing, physical thing, call it the quantum state. Question, all right, if you believe in that, is the quantum state all there is? So you think that's part of reality. Is there any more to physical reality? If you say, no, there's more than that, then you have additional variables, right? The, the quantum state is one variable. It's one thing you have to specify to specify the physical situation. And you say there are other variables, like what? Well, you might say in addition to the quantum state, this is the pilot wave picture, there are particles. Particles move around. So there are these variables. You have to tell me where they are, for example, to specify the full situation. So that's all this talk of hidden variables is about, is they should be, first of all, be called additional variables, not hidden, because they're not hidden. And, and you, of, of course, you'd be very puzzled. Why would I postulate something hidden to do physics? Because if it's hidden, what difference does it make? I mean, who cares what uh, invisible, <laughs> invisible things are doing? Um, what, what, you know, what, what's their role? But they're not hidden. They're, they're actually the things in that theory that make up the things we immediately see, tables and chairs and pieces of Lego and so on, are made of particles. Why does this piece of Lego have this shape? Because they're a bunch of particles. They have this shape. Straightforward. Um, the, the main problem and this is, again, another thing, uh, I mean, I'm just keep bringing up Bell. Bell writes a very nice paper called The Theory of Local Beables. And Bell, it, Bell invented this term, beable, um, and he invented it to contrast with the standard physics term, observable. So physicists all the time will talk about what are the observables of your theory. And observables, obviously, the word has something to do with observation, and Bell said, yeah, but anything observable must be built out of something that's just there, that just is. Mm -hmm. And so be a bull, right? What is there? What just exists independently of being observed? And he said, any theory should have local beable. So this comes back to the locality. It should have something physical going on in little parts of space, right? The, the, this is a local object. I'm holding it in my hand. It's yeah. here. It's not you know, it's not out the window, it's not on the other side, it's here. The wave function isn't. The wave function that can't even be defined on physical space once you have more than one particle. So you can't think of the wave function or the quantum state as a local beable. Everybody should agree about that. And Bell said, but you better have some. <laughs> um, the people who don't want anything other than the quantum state, this is a big problem for them because they can't deny that we talk about local things in space and essentially talk about them in describing physical experiments. Uh, so you need that language. The easy way to understand that language is to say, well, there is more to the world than the quantum state. There's something local, maybe a particle, maybe a field, maybe the, there are these things called flashes. Okay, there are different proposals for what these local things are but it's from the local things that I build up local objects of everyday life. So that seems to me obviously the right way to go. It seemed to Bell obviously the right way to go, that any decent physical theory should have some local beables. If it has a quantum state, that's not a local beable. So it's gonna have some local beables and some non-local beables. And why do I have both of these? Well. Why do I introduce, now you say, why do I introduce the quantum state? Why do I introduce this weird non-local thing? And the answer is because of the role it plays in the theory of influencing the behavior of the local thing. 
It's the local things we can see. Uh, there's a good analogy here that's often used to electromagnetic theory. As I said, uh, Maxwell, Faraday, and so on, these people introduced the idea of a field, an electric field. This was new. This, uh, the, the, the Democritus just has atoms in the void, no fields. So this was a novel proposal. And you can't directly see an electric field. You can't directly see a magnetic field. Why do you think it's there at all? Why do you introduce it into your physics? Well, you can see things like magnetic needles moving, right? That's matter. That's not field. That's the matter part. And you notice, gosh, these, you know, these particular ones, they jump or they always point this way. Um, they behave in certain visible ways. I need to explain that. And so you postulate a not immediately observable object in the service of explaining the behavior of the visible object. So the local, everything we can think we can directly observe is local. Right? I go into the lab and I report what's going on in the lab and everything I report is stuff in the lab. <laughs> you know, this dial was set this way and this yeah. spot appeared here. That's all local stuff. That gives me the data that physics has to explain. Um, you know, I get a, I get a, I get something out of out of CERN, and it's this thing with all these spirals and you know these pictures. These are all local things, and then I postulate what I need to to account for them, and that can uh, that can involve things, local things I can't directly observe, like fields, and it can involve weirdly enough having to postulate non-local things like quantum states. That's the real novelty of quantum theory is that it it postulates at a fundamental level something that isn't a local object.